Hello everyone, in this video I'll be discussing use case elements and styles. The learning objective for this video is that students should be able to describe the various parts of a use case and the purpose of each part. Let's talk about some of the basic elements of a use case. First, each use case should have a name and a number and a brief description. A priority may be assigned to indicate the relative significance of a use case. These priorities correspond to the priorities that you might put with requirements in the requirements definition document. An actor refers to a person or another system that interacts with the system to achieve a useful goal. Again, the actor is usually a person, but it can be another system. Also, there can be multiple actors in a single use case. Let's consider the example of the titanium learning management system. If we were writing up a use case for adding a student to a course in titanium, the actor could be a person, such as an instructor, who goes in and adds a student manually, or the actor could be another system, such as the Titan Online Class Scheduling System, that automatically adds students to titanium courses. The trigger for a use case is the event that causes the use case to begin. There are two types of triggers. External triggers are events that occur outside the system, and temporal triggers are the passage of a certain amount of time. Using the same titanium example, an external trigger could be the user clicking a button to add a new student. A temporal trigger might be that on the first day of class, all the students who are enrolled in the course are automatically added to titanium. It could also be that after a certain amount of time, after a student has been added to Titan Online, they are then added to the titanium course. Here's an example of how use case basic information might be formatted in a formal use case document. The example here is from the request a chemical use case discussed in the textbook chapter 4. Let's talk about some of the more detailed information that's included in a use case. The normal course is the set of major steps that are performed to execute the response to the event. Going back to our titanium example, if an instructor wanted to add a student to a course, there are several steps that must be taken. First, the user must click the button that says add a user. Then the system must supply a set of potential users to add to the course. Then the instructor can select a student and click the add button. Then the system does some behind the scenes steps to add that user to the roster. Exceptions are error conditions encountered while performing use case steps. What happens if an instructor types in an invalid email address? The exceptions portion of the use case will describe what happens in this scenario. Perhaps the titanium system will display an error message and or perform various other steps. Preconditions define what must be complete before beginning the use case. For example, the student must be in the CSUF system, the student must have a CSU email address, and so forth. The post conditions define what is complete when the use case ends. For example, the student's name will appear on the roster in Titanium, the student will have access to Titanium materials, and so forth. Here are some examples of how to format these portions of the use case taken from the textbook example of requesting a chemical. You can see that the normal course and the exceptions are listed in an outline format, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's possible during the normal course to have different branches of decision logic. For example, you can see here under step number 2 that the quantity on hand might be less than the quantity needed. So the substeps A and B explain what happens in these alternative courses of action. The examples in the textbook include a line at the beginning of the normal course marked 1.0. The information on this line is essentially the same as the title of the use case. The reason they include this is in case they also want to include several alternative courses of action in addition to the normal course. These are numbered 1.1, 1.2, and so forth. You can see examples of these in the textbook if you're interested. For the purposes of this course and project, you don't have to include that line. Again, the exceptions portion of the use case will explain what happens when there is an unusual error. Preconditions and postconditions are also easy to read if you list them in numbered format. Fully dressed use case format is very detailed and highly structured. In this format, the analyst adds new sections, including alternative courses, 
input and output for each step of the normal course, and summary inputs and outputs at the end. I won't require fully dressed use cases for this course. A regular use case that is not fully dressed is sometimes called the casual use case, although this terminology is not universal. If you'd like to see more examples of fully dressed use cases, please see figure 4-3 of the textbook. You might consider using a fully dressed use case format under these conditions. If users are not closely engaged with the development team, or if the project has high complexity and or high risk.